uh, my dear students i welcome all of you to this class today we are discussing one of the most important speeches delivered by the chief of seattle and the title is the end of living and the beginning of survival it is meant for the second semester ba bsc bcom students is part of their common course and the title of the book is zaid geist as all of you know and the subtitle readings on society and culture module 2 sustainable environment and the title of the piece is the end of living and the beginning of survival by chief seattle okay i welcome all of you to this session and the essay starts with uh, a million dollar question the question is how can you buy or sell the sky the warmth of the land the idea is strange to us now the end of living and the beginning of survival starts with a wonderful question that question is that how can you buy or sell the sky that doesn't belong to you and the warmth of the land that doesn't belong to you and the idea is strange to us okay and it shows the attitude of the white people and the indian towards the land that's why i gave the title the attitude the white versus the indian and the the indian says every part of this earth is sacred to my people my people means the tribals of america otherwise called the red indian people and every shining pine needle every sandy shore every mist in the dark woods every clearing and humming insect is holy in the memory and experience of my people the sap which courses through the trees carries the memories of the red man you know this is the point of the discussion the whole earth is sacred to my people that colonizer the englishman the white cannot able to understand that is our mindset our mindset is different from your mindset as far as we are concerned even the leaf of a tree you know pine tree pine is a famous tree and the needle is the leaf of that particular tree and the shore the seashore and the mist in the dark woods especially in the morning and in the evening and every clearing and humming insect the insect that is making the humming sound a holy to our memory and the experience to my people and he says the sap which courses through the trees carries the memories of the red man even the sap sap means juice for example you know sap of the rubber tree that's very famous in kerala you know because we are planting uh, too much rubbers rubber trees and we have the sap so sap means the juice of the tree now in the slide new slide that starts the attitude one second the white versus the indian the white man's deed i mean the white man's dead to forget to the country of their birth when they go to walk among the stars you know uh, white people are too much fond of traveling least bothered about their motherland they are traveling throughout the world that's why they are colonized every part of the world they have that instinct to go to the places that they want to go they reach even the stars and our dead never forget this beautiful earth it is the most it is the mother of the red man the earth is the mother is a very wonderful concept of the uh, of these people they believe that earth is their mother and you cannot separate you know to with your mother because mother is too fond of you i'm sure you like your mother very much okay and there is no substitute for your mother so the black people i mean the the red indians of america they consider the land as their mother that's a wonderful concept okay but now that cannot cannot be seen in the uh, white colonizer who came to colonize uh, united states of america and other uh, countries of uh, american continents okay then uh, 
the perfumed flowers are our sisters yeah flowers are sisters right and then they said the perfumed flowers not all the flowers because uh, product, producing perfume is instinctive to flowers so our sisters and the deer an animal the horse and the great eagle these are our brothers so who are the mother the earth and who are the sisters the perfumed flowers okay and who are the brothers the horse the eagle and all animals are their brothers so they cannot go away from their land because you cannot uh, be parted away with your mother your brother your sister like that he goes on saying the rocky crest the juices in the meadows the body heat of the pony and man all belong to the same family the rock you know what is rock the strong material very strong rock and the rocky crest the cliff and other parts of the rock and the juices in the meadows in the meadows you know meadow the grass grows there and in the morning when you go you will uh, you will get the dew drops is very juicy very wonderful and the body heat of the pony pony is a hose and the body heat you you when you touch a hose or when you touch a pony when you touch a goat or a bird you will get the the warmth of it and man all belong to the same family so man doesn't have a separate existence man is the part and parcel of a universal system that comprises the rocky crust the juice in the meadows the body heat of the pony and man all are together this is a wonderful concept put forward by chief seattle in this speech now we move to the most important question in the in the speech that is uh, who owns the land are you owner of the land we said this is my land india is our land it is my land pakistan is other land and we said this land belongs to me and i have 10 acres of land we are saying like that now the question is that if we do not own the freshness of the air and the sparkle of the water how can you buy them how can you buy the land because you are not the owner of the air the water and the freshness of the air then who is the owner is a, a foundational question asked by chief seattle so you do not belong to a particular place but you are universal because the air doesn't belong to you the water doesn't belong to you it belongs to all so in terms of money how can you buy this land the air and the water is a very important question asked by uh, this chief seattle then he says okay we are ready to sell the land to you no problem but there is a condition so the this is the context of the speech the context is that the great chief in washington sent a word to chief seattle that he wished to buy their land so he, uh, chief seattle responds yeah you ask much of us that's a question we cannot even imagine of we cannot even think of how can we sell the land we cannot even think of so you are providing me a wonderful a very nefarious and a dangerous mischievous idea but anyway the great chief sends word he will reserve us a place so that we can live comfortably to ourselves he says that he will purchase our land he will buy our land and he will provide us a land a kind of reservation he will provide us so first he uses the land from us and he provides us some kind of a haven so that idea is so ridiculous to the chief then he says he will be our father and we will be his children so we will consider your offer to buy our land but it will not be easy yeah we will consider we will consider to sell the land but that is not very easy because this land is holy to us this land is sacred to us what do you mean by sacred you know sacred book quran is a sacred text gita is a sacred text bible is a sacred text okay so sacred means the holy so we will consider your offer to buy our land but it is not very easy because this land is sacred to us it's a very dear to us we are very fond of the land and it is a holy one religious one right and this shining water that moves in the streams and rivers is not just water 
but the blood of our ancestors. You can see water in the rivers, shining water, yeah, very, you know, a kind of a crystal clear water. The moment you see the water, you uh, wish to jump to it, swim to it, fish from it. So that wonderful land. But don't forget, these streams and rivers are carrying not just water, but the blood of our ancestors. So all rivers are there. These rivers are the blood of our ancestors. The veins, the blood vessels are there. So when you destroy a river, when you destroy a river, what you are going to do is that you are destroying and you are drying up the blood of your ancestor. You know, ancestor means uh, your father's father's father, that is your parentage, goes back, that is ancestor. Okay, so these ancestors, they paid much. These ancestors, they worked hard in the, in the land. As a result of that, their sweat, their perspiration dropped into the water and now the water became the blood. So we cannot sell the blood of our ancestors. And again he says, if we sell you the land, you must remember that it is sacred. But in the, at the point of compulsion perhaps, we will send you the land because you are powerful. You, are, you have weapons with you. You can confiscate. You can take it away by force. Forcibly, you can add it, but don't forget that it is sacred. You must remember that it is sacred to us. And you must teach your children that it is sacred and that each ghostly reflection in the clear water of the lakes tells of events and memories in the life of my people. You should educate your children. Not your lessons, but our lessons. Not your concerns, but our concerns. Not your considerations, but our considerations. As far as you are concerned, the river is filled with water. As far as we are concerned, the rivers are filled with the blood of our ancestors. This great message, this clear message, you should pass from one generation to another generation. That has to be transmitted from one generation to another generation. So your children should be properly trained and educated. And they should be given this kind of a message from you. That what, what, what that is lakes tell of events and memories in the life of my people. The water's murmur is the voice of my father's father. You can see the murmuring of water. Murmuring sound of the water is quite interesting. I, I think many of you have visited uh, some um, important places, water beds, um, streamlets, waterfalls, etc. Uh, for example, you, you might have visited your Adirapalli, Varachal kind of places. There you can see the murmuring of water. How oh, beautiful it is. Wonderful it is. And what is this murmur? These murmurs are the voices of my father's father. So I see my father's father in the water. I understand the voice, the murmur as the sweet voices, perhaps melancholic voices of my father's father. Right? So, this is the message that I want to give you, he says. I can give you the land, but that is not an easy task. I can give you the land, but you should consider it as very sacred. A third point is that you should educate your children that the land has to be considered, the water has to be considered, animals, plants, trees, everything had to be considered as sacred. Otherwise, there won't be any compromise between you and us. Okay. And what about the rivers? Again, he elaborates the point. The river and the Indian and the white. How do they look at? The rivers are our brothers. They quench our thirst. Who is a brother? Who is a brother? You know the, you, the, the proverb, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Like that, who is a brother? Your brother is one who comes to you always for help. Because... Mother, you are, both of you share the same mother. You are the same mother. That is why you like your brothers very much. And brothers are quenching your thirst. That is why the river is a brother. And he or she will quench your thirst. What is quenching the thirst means? When you drink water, you will feel comfortable. That is quenching. And the rivers carry our canoes. Canoes means small boats. 
country boards and feed our children. The rivers are giving us food in the form of fish, in the form of other uh, sea beings. And that gives water to the animals to drink. And if we sell you the land, you must remember and teach your children that the rivers are our brothers and yours. Yeah, this chief Seattle doesn't say that the river belongs to him. No, he says that the river belongs to all, irrespective of the color of their skin, both black or white, both red or, uh, or semi-red or white. So color of the skin doesn't matter. But he says that it is brother to all. And if we uh, sell you the land, you must remember, teach your children that rivers are brothers and yours. And you must henceforth give the rivers the kindness you would give any brother. So your approach should be of kind, generosity. You cannot say that you are conquering the river. You cannot conquer the river. What you are going to do, you want to use the river just like you use your brother. A brother is very important, you know, is very helpful to us. Right? And we, uh, we uh, you know, in the classroom we say, he is our brother. Or uh, somebody, uh, yeah, she is my sister, you say. Right? You say, she is my sister. Perhaps she is your lover, right? But you say, she is my sister. What does it mean? That connection is inseparable. So inseparability of the connection is highlighted by the point that you should be kindness to the river always. Okay. Now this is very important difference between the white and the Indian. The white people, they conquer the Indian people, they pamper. That's the difference. You know, in the first grammar class, we are uh, um, saying that Columbus conquered America. Or Columbus discovered America. Uh, that's a funny question. You say Columbus discovered America, right? But they are not ready to acknowledge that. They say that Columbus conquered America. That was not a discovery at all. That's a conquering. So the white people, they think that they are conquering everything, conquering the nature, conquering the animals, conquering the land, etc. But the white people, they pamper everything. They consider with love and affection. And the text says, we know that the white man does not understand our way. That is the instinctive fault of the white man. You cannot understand our sensibility and our sentiment. And as far as you are concerned, he says, one portion of land is the same to him as the next. For he is a stranger who comes in the night and takes from the land whatever he needs. So this is the concept. The, as far as the white man is concerned, as far as the colonizer is concerned, as far, as far as the conqueror is concerned, there is no difference between this piece of land with that piece of land. He comes in the night and he usurps, conquers, takes away everything. And that the earth is not his brother but his enemy. As far as we are concerned, earth is our mother or brother. But as far as a white man is concerned, a colonizer is concerned, uh, this earth is his enemy to conquer. And when he has conquered it, he moves on. He leaves his father's grave behind and he does not care. He kidnaps the earth from his children and he does not care. What is kidnapping? Taking by force, right? Kidnapped. Uh, Sita was kidnapped by Ravana, you know, that ancient Indian epic example. Kidnap means using, uh, by uh, using force and taking away someone out. That is kidnapping. So he means the white, kidnaps the earth from his children and he does not care. His father's grave and his children's birthright are forgotten. And the Englishman or the white man doesn't have any affiliation, any affinity in that way, any emotional attachment to his father. His father was buried elsewhere. Maybe uh, some very remotest part of the world, his father was buried. And the children were buried in some other part of the world. And there is no emotional attachment with the land and the life. There is no emotional attachment to the brother and the sister. That is the culture. And that is why he says, you cannot, in the very beginning of the line, you can see, uh, we know that the white man does not understand our ways. So there are two ways, the white way and the red Indian way. The white way or the Indian way. The white way or the original people's way that are different. And his father's grave, his children's birthright are forgotten. 
he treats his mother, the earth, and his brother, the sky, things to be bought, planted, sold like sheep or bright beads. His appetite will devour everything. So he wants to buy it. He treats his mother, the earth, brother, the sky, as things to be bought. That means if you have money, you can buy everything they believe. So you are, you are going to be the money makers. If you have money, you can buy everything. That is the uh, modern concept too. Right? You have money. And you think you can buy everything. And when I ask you who is the happiest man in the world, you will say perhaps Bill Gates is the happiest man. Or Ambani is the happiest one, you say. Because what criterion we have? We believe that those people who have money is the happiest one in the world. So this is the mindset of the English people. And the mother or the, the, the earth or the sky, he wants to plunder. Plunder means conquering or taking uh, money and means by force and so selling like sheep or white beads. His appetite will devour. Okay. And uh, devour everything. And he says that now the city and the village. Now two important uh, concepts emerging out of the essay. One is that, what do you mean by the word city and what do you mean by the village? The city represents the white. The city represents the white and the village, the Indian. I don't know, he says, our ways are different than your ways. The sight of your city is pains the eyes of the red man. You are boasting of your cities. Cities are great, you say. But the moment we see a city, the busy people, neck and neck competition. And, you know, that kind of a very uh, tumultuous condition in the, in the city. All are paining the eyes of the red man. There is a quiet place in the white man's cities. You know, quietness is there. Peace of mind, calmness, serenity. These are absent in the cities. And no place to hear the unfurling of leaves in spring or the rustle of the insect wings. In the city, there is no room. There is no place to hear the unfurling of leaves in spring or the rustle of the insect wings. So how can you live without the, uh, without the music of the spring, the leaves and the rustle of the insect? Rustle means the sound produced by the insect, nocturnal insects. And so those insects who are appearing in the, in the daytime, they are creating their own sounds. And the clatter only seems to insult the ears. And what is there to life if a man cannot hear the lonely cry of the vipuvil or the arguments of the frogs around the pond at night? Vipuvil is a kind of insect. In the glossary, I will explain all the meanings in detail. In the next part of this slide, in the, this presentation, you will get to the glossary part. There you will get the detailed uh, description of the important words used in the text. Vipur will is a small insect and all the arguments of frog around the pond at night. You know how uh, nostalgic it is. Uh, I, I, I don't know how many of you are uh, familiar with these kind of things. During the night time, the frogs are making music and the insects, Vipur will and other insects are creating sounds, music everywhere. And I am a red man and do not understand. Why I am not able to understand? Because I am a red man and I cannot understand the way what your cities are producing. Your cities are producing what? Competition. Peacelessness of mind. No sound of frog. No sound of uh, an insect. No music of the bird. No music of the spring. What is the product? What is the ultimate net result of your cities? That I don't like at all, he says. I am a red man. The Indian prefers the soft sound of the wind, darting over the face of a pond and the smell of the wind itself, cleaned by a mid rain or scented with pinion pine. So I am an Indian, the Indian. Okay, don't be confused with our India. That is different. Now the Indian means red Indians. Now this red Indian prefers what? The soft sound. The red Indian prefers the soft sound, not the hard sound of the metals. Of course not. Not the sound of the big factories and establishment, enterprises. No. We like 
we like what we like the soft sound okay soft sound of the wind darting over the face of a pond okay see uh, imagine such a world in which you know there is a pond that i think you you have seen ponds everywhere because in kerala we have blessed with too much ponds okay though polluted many but still we have wonderful ponds you might have got your own experience in swimming diving fishing etc in the ponds okay so the indian prefers a soft sound and uh, what the sound of the wind darting over the face of a pond how beautiful it is a breeze coming darting the, that breeze coming by force and that touches the the surface level of the water and that creates a kind of music and that is too cleaned by a mid earth rain and the afternoon rains are also there how beautiful it is or scented with the pinion pine you can see the smell of the pinion pine so you might have you might have visited ooty i am sure in the see ooty is so famous for the drizzling the rain the spray rain that you might have experienced especially during evening suppose you are in the in the botanical garden in the evening time drizzle comes to you how beautiful it is the smell and people are moving here and there and the the grass is wet with water not a heavy rain not torrential rainfall but you can see some drizzling that's very beautiful so this kind of a memory being shared by uh, the chief seattle the air is precious to the red man for all things share the same breath the beast the tree the man we like the air why we like the air because you know the indian share the same breath the air is precious to the red man why for all things share the same breath see this is all of you are inhaling oxygen the same oxygen is used by animals the same oxygen is used by trees plants waters every, every, every one of us so what is the difference between the living uh, of a human being and an animal in that matter because we share we means who are who are the we here that is the beast the tree the man beast means animal all of you know the tree and the man so we share the same breath and that is why the white man does not seem to notice the air he breathes the white man is least conscious about least bothered about the air so he requests the white man to think about the air that he inhales the same air is used by the beasts the same air is used by all animals all plants and all men right and there is no separation there is no uh, wall right between i mean uh, in the in the air supply those part reserved for men those part reserved for animal those part reserved for beast no there is no such divisions we share the same breath and this is this kind of a concept provided the indian a kind of a nature that is accommodative that is accommodative accepting all right and he says the wind that gave our grandfather his first breath also receives the last sigh he thinks about his grandfather on a fine day the grandfather came to the world began to inhale and keeping on inhaling the air the oxygen a day arrived the final moment of the old man and that old man that grandfather used the same breath for his last sigh from beginning to end from uh, you know from cradle to the graveyard we are using the same air the same oxygen supply we have and if we sell you our land you must keep it apart and sacred as a place where even the white man can go to taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadows flower so uh, we are saying that we are ready to give you the land you can give the land we are ready to give you the land no problem and you can also come to here you can enjoy the wind you can smell the taste and you will enjoy the scent so there is no reservation uh, for everything so the same air that belongs to the white man belongs to the red man as well so if you have this kind of a concept you can come and you can purchase the land
otherwise it is impossible for you to come and uh, make a negotiation about selling and buying the land. Now, as far as we are concerned, the Indians are concerned, man and beast are bye-bye, you know that phrase bye-bye, right? Man and beast are bye-bye. So, we will consider you offer to buy our land. If you desire to accept, I will make one condition. What is the condition? The man must, the white man must treat the beast of this land as his brothers. Condition number one. You should consider all the beasts of the land, all the animals of the land as your brothers. Dog is your brother. Cat is your brother. Tiger is your brother. Elephant is your brother. Right? Leopard is your brother. Domestic as well as wild animals are your brothers. When you consider like that, you can come and buy the land. I am a savage, he says. And I do not understand any other way. Now, savage actually means those people who are living in the forest. We say garden, for example. Garden. And we say savage means uncivilized. But he uses the term in a, in a different sense, he says that. Now, I am a savage. You call me a savage. The white man calls other people savage, uncivilized. When George Bush attacked Iraq. Right, he said he wanted to civilize the people. When the Englishmen came to India, they declared that they wanted to convert India a democratic country. So wherever they go, they carry this kind of a, uh, what you call this kind of a slogan. So now they call the Red Indian savage. So he say, I am a savage and I am proud of it. I am a savage and I am proud of it. He says, the white man must treat the beast of this land as brothers. I am a savage and do not understand any other way. I have seen a thousand rotting buffaloes on the prairie. Prairie is the meadow, the big meadow that can be seen in Canada, in Australia, in many other countries. Long prairies where, you know, cattle are grazing. Large number of cows, goats, sheep, etc. are grazing in prairies. So that is very, in literature you can see the reference to prairies on many occasions, especially literatures are coming from Canada and uh, Australia. Okay, so we are discussing um, how the Indians look at the connection between man and beast. Now we ask a wonderful question. The question is that what is man without the beasts? If all the beasts were gone, man would die from a great loneliness of the spirit. He says that man becomes a man. When? When there are animals. If there are no animals, there is no point in the life of a man. Okay. And for whatever happens to the beast, soon happens to man. All things are connected. So whatever happens to an animal, that comes to man also. So all, this is the most important argument of the essay, of the speech. The interconnectivity of man with other animals and plants. And he repeats the sentence that already we discussed. You must teach your children what? The ground beneath their feet is the ashes of our grandfathers. The white man, you should teach your children what? The most important lesson. Now you are footing here, you are here. But where are you now? You are on the ground and beneath your feet you can see the ashes of our grandfathers. So, we are, our grandfathers were buried here, the same place they were buried. So, when you come here, don't think that you conquered them. No, you cannot conquer them. And don't forget that you came only to plunder and to conquer. That message you should teach your children. And you should teach your children how to respect the land. You should teach your children the earth is rich with the lives of our kin. And you should teach your children that we have taught our children that the earth is our mother. This is very important. You should teach your children the importance of the land. And you should teach your children the culture of the Red Indians. That we taught our children. The Red Indians taught their children to believe that their fathers, forefathers, grandfathers, grandparents were buried here and you should respect. And whatever befalls the earth befalls the soon sons of the earth also. If men spit upon the ground, they spit upon themselves. Yeah, this is very applicable even today. 
when you spit on the land that is you are spitting on your selves it is because you are spitting on your grandfathers because your grandfathers are there buried here and when you spit what happens you are spitting on the face of your grandfather that means you are spitting on your face so public spitting okay that we have to avoid uh, during this season that we know now uh, towards the end of the essay he gives a great warning and that warning is applicable in covid 19 times too yeah this speech was delivered some 3 centuries back right but still it is you know it is interesting and that is why i have given the title it is applicable in covid 19 times too what is that even the white man whose god walks and talks with him as friend to friend cannot be exempt from the common destiny destiny is very important right you have your own gods and you pretend that you are god but what is your destiny when a small virus came to you you became pandemic you became scared right so this chief seattle for ones gives a warning that your destiny is very important so now you are the kings of the land you pretend so but in the immediate future you will be out you will be thrown away and we may be brothers after all we shall see one thing we know which the white man may one day discover our god is the same god right you are you came with your god christian god for example but our god is same that you, sh- you are going to understand that you may think now that you own him as you wish to own our land you believe that or you pretend that you own your god that is impossible you cannot own your god you cannot own your god just like you cannot own your land you cannot own any land any piece of land because this land does not belong to you but you cannot he is the god of man and his compassion is equal for the red man and the white and this god is not so friendly to you and not so hostile to us no so the same destiny you are experiencing you are waiting for the same destiny the earth is precious to him and to harm the earth is to heap contempt on its creator and this earth is so dear to the god and the god likes this earth very much and when you destroy the land what is actually happening you are trying to you are trying to uh, harass or you are trying to destroy you are trying to uh, negotiate with the interest of the god so that is that is, means you are going to you are moving very fast to your final destiny and this wide too shall pass perhaps sooner than all other tribes can terminate your bed and you will can terminate your bed and uh you will one day disappear he says that you don't believe that you are eternal and nobody is ready to conquer you no you can be conquered just like now you conquer us you can also be conquered by some other enemies that is your destiny that's a great warning just like as i said in the beginning uh, now a small virus creates all these kind of problems you know a very small not even visible by our naked eyes so now the white people think that one a day will come in that day you will be thrown out by a new team so be very careful you very careful in your perishing you will shine brightly fired by the strength of the god who brought you to this land and for some special purpose gave you dominion over this land and over the red man so the same god has given you a permission he granted a permission to you to come and conquer the land now you are the masters of the land but don't think that you are going to be the everlasting masters no a fine day will come in which you will also be thrown out and that destiny is a mystery to us for we don't understand when the buffalo are all slaughtered the wild horses are tamed the secret come corners of the forest heavy with the scent of many men and the view of the ripe hills blotted by talking wires he says that means buffaloes are going to be slaughtered slaughter means mass killing 
you might have seen a rubber plantation slaughtered right slaughter means mass killing so buffaloes are killed large numbers in large numbers by the white people and the wild horses are tamed tamed means domesticated you domesticated the wild animals okay and uh, wild horses are tamed the secret corners of the forest heavy with the scent of many men and the view of the ripe hills blotted by talking wires talking wires means telephone or now all these things were replaced buffaloes were killed wild horses were tamed and the scent of many men and view of the ripe hills blotted by talking wires where is the thicket there's a question where is the thicket small forest where are the forest where where is the bush gone disappeared where is the eagle what happened to eagle you came with the telephone cable you came with the telephone a big pylons you came with uh, uh, some machines some trains you brought in now what happened what happened to the forest disappeared gone where is the eagle gone the end of living and the beginning of survival now be aware of that this is a warning i am giving to you he says to the white people you came here you engrossed the land you purchased the land you destroyed everything you made cities you destroyed villages you destroyed ponds you killed frogs everything you did what is the result the bush disappeared the calm, peace of mind disappeared calmness disappeared so one thing is sure you are going to the same destiny that means a fine day will come in that day you will also be thrown away now this is very applicable very relevant in the covid 19 times now you can see many big countries of the world they are trailing back they are suffering much they believed that they cannot be conquered by no none but what happened a small virus invisible virus came and attacked them so the chief seattle prophesied that your uh, pride and your thought machinery will be uh, disappeared on a fine day thank you thank you very much